would like to begin by recognizing and acknowledging that we are working and learning together on the traditional territory of the Nakazli Waten First Nations. Fort St. James is a small town in the north central region of BC. We are surrounded by five First Nations communities, including Nakazli Waten First Nation, Tlazdin Nation, Vinche Waten First Nation, Yakuche First Nation, and Takla Nation. We are also known for our beautiful lake, Stewart Lake, our ski area called Murray Ridge, our provincial parks, and our outdoor recreation. Fort St. James Secondary School is comprised of roughly 70% Indigenous population. Therefore, it made sense in the design of this project to look at some of the major historical barriers that have led to the destruction and marginalization of the local culture, and how we, as a community, move forward towards cultural revitalization and mending historical wrongs. As such, we focused our project on the truth and reconciliation process. Concentrating on truth and reconciliation created a means to deeply engage our students into the wrongs done and help them to try to make sense of why they happened and where to go from here. We were honoured by having the support of local Aboriginal knowledge holders, school district staff, administration and our students, which made this incredibly complicated yet meaningful legacy wall a reality. Presented in this documentary are some of the stakeholders for this project who worked with us to make this a powerful and enduring educational experience. It's brought peace, you know, unity, um, balance, all of those things that are connected not only to the culture but to education itself. We all of the teachers and staff and, you know, um, adults in this education system have created an environment for the children to learn. Every one of the children that worked on the project, students, have families that they've brought home the information to. And they, in turn, spread it to their families and to the other communities. Even something as small as one panel representing a clan member. And the clan member actually represents 10 different nations in the surrounding communities. So one panel has the information that actually reached at least 10 communities around here. So that's one thing that I, I really see a deep, strong connection with the panel that's at the entrance and for education and all the people that were in favor of this project. So the legacy wall that you guys put together and your students put together um, did actually some really amazing things for me as a school principal. It actually allowed me to engage with parents about what's happening in the school. It's a neutral thing, we can talk about it. We talked about the history of the school, we talked about the history of the community, and we talked about where we're going. Because as you guys know, so many of our, our students, their parents came to this school. When I was in school, talk about how they were in school and how we're making it better for everybody. So it really triggers um, conversations. I'm really happy that you guys put this together. That this is going to be going for a long time because the students who you did it, they'll come back eventually. And oh, remember when we did this? And this is what we talked about. This is how we felt. And then it'll give them a chance to reflect on how things gotten better. Are we working better with people? First of all, the legacy wall is absolutely gorgeous. Um, immediately, it's, at, it's located at the front of the school, and it, immediately upon entering the school, folks are immediately drawn to that wall. And when it was first placed up there, I could see folks stopping, looking at it, admiring, asking questions. And that's what really we want folks to do, is to inquire about what is going on in the school as an initial uh, reaction to what's happening in the school. And by asking questions, then we can start the conversation. I was actually, after being involved in the original interview, having a chance to go into the school to look at um, the different parts of the school and how everything came together, and then listening to the words of the educators that were involved, and also the community members that were involved, like Guy Prince. I was incredibly um, excited about just 
all of the responsibilities that this had, and not only for the school, and this is where that um, the school and community connection really was such a key part of this whole process, because not only do you have the voices of those within our system, and sometimes within our system, we just remain within our system and don't include that outside perspective, but from the panned out shots of the community, which really showed the pride of living in that physical space. And we talk about community as in people, but I, I love the incorporation of that ideal of that whole physical space and territory. And then the, the voices that came not only from um, Guy himself, but the elder knowledge that he provided through it. And so I believe that that is so, such a great stepping stone to where we need to be in truth and reconciliation and exemplifies it. Um, such an exciting process in that way and, and just, you know, honored to be a part of it. I believe that the project has created a great understanding with students and within all, within staff and the school as a whole. I believe it is very important to uh, engage with the students with the truth and reconciliation. Um, it's a great start to provide the knowledge and understanding within them. And once we provide that understanding within them, we're going to be moving forward in a positive direction with truth and reconciliation. It is a, it's a, it's a big project, definitely, but a little goes a long ways, I believe. The connection this project has made in the school and the communities has been a very powerful um, start to, uh, to the real truth and reconciliation across the country and across the, all the nations and even the world. The small part of, say, one classroom that creates um, a project like this, especially right in the entrance of the school, in the whole education system. It shows um, what you're gonna stand by and what you're gonna represent in the education system. The students decided themselves um, what was going to go on that um, legacy wall. The wood was chosen from all over the world, again, connecting our little community to the rest of the world. What it shows is that truth and rec reconciliation is the action of one person, one classroom, one school. It is a community approach, and you need those entire community perspectives. Um, also, the truth piece of it is everyone was so honest. Truth and honesty are, are similar, but not always the same. Um, truth is that, that act. And the honesty piece, which I also think were exemplified through this process, was that people were living their truth. So you can tell the truth and then you can live your truth live in an honest way. And every voice that I heard, whether in person through interviews or as I read on the panels in the wall, everyone was being honest and living their truth through that process. So I think that goes a long way into the truth and reconciliation piece. Four students from Fort St. James Secondary School would like to share their opinions through either audio or writing regarding what they learned and the processes involved in this cross-curricular project that focused on truth and reconciliation. I really enjoyed being able to make up a plan and then using the computer program and designing it, then finally being able to watch it being cut out with the machine. It was really cool to see the process, watching how it grew from just a sketch in the beginning to a beautiful piece of art by the end, and being able to look at the whole feather at the very end and know where it came from and all the different people who helped out. This project helps students learn and engage with the curriculum that surrounds truth and reconciliation because they became more aware during the social studies class. When the topic of residential schools came into the class, we were into the COVID-19 lockdown. It gave me more time to do excess research and more reading on the chapters we were studying. Even if I did the bare minimum of what we had to learn, I would still be more educated prior to looking into this topic. I find that it's the same situation with the project where not only did we get to learn more about history, but we got to visualize it in, on our own circumstances and be rewarded by having it be put on the school wall for everyone to see. Participating in three classes to complete this project I think was a clever idea. Having more and a larger variety of students participating 
makes the message all the more impactful. The most impactful part of this project was of getting a better understanding of why the Truth and Reconciliation Act is so important. Learning about the residential schools and how terribly the First Nations peoples were treated just because of the different cultures and historical backgrounds was probably what was the most impactful for me. It still amazes me how the Europeans who came over thought it was okay to treat them so badly and that what they were doing would help when it really didn't. It just caused a bigger rift between them. I believe the truth and reconciliation process has really helped with the healing. Even if things had gone differently when they first met and they had been able to accept each other for, their way, for the way they are, so their differences in culture, appearance, and way of life, we would have probably been in a better position with each other. This Truth and Reconciliation project connects with the community and students in a few different ways. Having it all come down to details, each student that designed a piece of the feather shows their connection to the Truth and Reconciliation by putting out what they picture when the words are spoken to them. This shows each student and community member who enters the building that there are people who see it. There are people who care about it enough to make the change in society and to have equal treatment among all. The lesson I took from this is whether or not we, as individuals, have been affected by the residential school system. All of us have the responsibility to seek truth and reconciliation however we can. Again, if I'm going to reiterate this piece, um, I've had time to think since those original questions before seeing the outcome of this project. Um, after seeing the outcome of the project and all of the hard work that went into um, this piece, I think that we think about cross-curricular as being different subjects, but from a very Indigenous perspective, um, from what I've seen from the, the school community and the outside community, is this idea around cross-curricular within the ways of thinking and knowing and being. And often we think logically, we think with our minds, um, and, and that's the only place we engage. Whole, and, and, and what we try to strive, um, especially in a cross-curricular way, is to be holistic, is to hit different areas of thinking in different ways. And like I said, I, I went very surface level when I was introduced to this project, and I talked about the different subject areas um, that were that were utilized in order to carry out this project. But in thinking more about it, um, I, one of the pieces that really stood out is that not only are we engaging students' minds and, and having them to stretch their ways of thinking about one particular topic in different ways, but we're also very holistically gaining, um, engaging them emotionally. So having that heart-mind connection and for me, that's very important. That speaks to our core competencies in what we're trying to do. So not only are we engaging very directly with the curriculum um, that we're tasked to help our students learn through, but also those skills and those emotionals and emotional pieces um, and those physical pieces um, of our core competencies. So in thinking more about it, it's very holistic. Um, speaks to the First Peoples principles of learning. And because fundamentally this is grounded in those perspectives, that goes a long way in promoting truth and reconciliation because um, you're coming at it from those multiple perspectives, considering so many different things. I mean, the depths of the layers of things that are being done through this project can be talked about and thought about for years and I think it will have a profound impact and, and I still um, think that this will shift the way in projects like this will shift the way in which and how we teach things within BC um, public schools. Well if we just talk about the physical nuts and bolts of kids moving from a social studies classroom to a shop classroom in the same block that's unique. That hasn't happened here on a regular basis before. Kids loved it. There's kids who hadn't, hadn't had an opportunity to spend time in the shop who got to spend time in the shop. There was kids who went there who got to see other students excelling in the shop who they may never have talked to. But the more important thing, it brought together conversations about what we need to do to make this school better. 
what we need to do in our community to help people recognize what's happened in the past and where we have to go. I am very excited that the Truth and Reconciliation Project is coming out within the school. Um, I believe that once everyone gets involved, then it gets a little bit easier and not placed on one, say, for example, a First Nations person within the school. Um, I believe that it just creates a more community work. Um, so then if the teacher has a little bit more knowledge and students and within the school, we will definitely provide and piece together more positive piece to the puzzle. Um, the sum of the things that the students chose to put on there uh, in, in regards to truth and reconciliation, together we heal. Education will get us out. Moving forward together. Truth, acceptance, and healing. I talked a little bit about this before, um, you know, uh, bringing connection with the students um, and the people and the land, you know. And one of the things that is really powerful in our culture is um, wood, the trees, and uh, it's so powerful that we actually um, call our greatest, um, our greatest clan leader who controls all the clan, we call him Keohodachan, and Keohodachan is actually translated to the standing trees of the forest. So, you know, the, the connection to the land is represented in this, and those feathers is a material like we believe strongly in feathers because feathers in our culture are materials used in two worlds in the physical world and the spiritual world so we're not only connecting the different cultures of the world by bringing the wood from all over the world you're also bringing a connection to the spirit world and the land and the people and that's just an amazing thing it helps the students build a better understanding so when we start somewhere and then it goes outwards so when the students are able to understand they're going to be able to understand within their home and within their community. And every one of those students that represent um, part of this legacy is going to echo all of these teachings through time where it's going to be um, a part of their identity. Every student that got inspired to learn and to involve themselves with hands-on learning is something that they'll never forget. And it's something the education system will never forget because now it's a part of history and it's a part of our future.